G'day everybody and welcome back for some more of the Collector. Oh how nice it is to wake up in my cryopod and not dead. And my tools should be here. Hey. So, we should be ready to jump, I think. Still have 27 days of power. Now, I'm always curious when I log on whether my batteries are active or whether my reactors are active. And... Wow. What? Holy moly. Um... My batteries are still charged? Those couple of solar panels I have must have kept me charged this whole time. You're kidding me. That's crazy. I had... What? Ha... Huh. I must have set this up so I'm using so little power. That's... That's crazy. How are my oxygen tanks looking? I have no idea what percentage they were actually at. I... I don't... This, this isn't useful information to me whatsoever. <laughs> but yeah, the... What have I got? Three solar panels. Three solar panels is enough. Ah. That's... Huh. I'm... I have no better word. I'm flummoxed. Um... <laughs> cool, I guess. Alright. Um... Let's turn everything on. Except... We're gonna do something a bit different. Thought this was a good idea that people suggested. And I'm gonna go... Engines... On. Then I'm gonna go and turn off these two hydrogen tanks. So, in theory, I should now, for any energy that I've got that I'm using on this thing, should be using energy generated by uh, my brain wrong. So now in theory, I should be using my engines to provide all the energy, which should be dragging their fuel from up here. Nope. O2 gens are on. Turn those off too. I'll get there eventually. That should mean just the tanks underneath are on. Are off. Tanks underneath are off. I was also thinking about this. I probably don't need three reactors. Even with all the jump drives and ion thrusters and everything else, I probably don't need three large reactors. So I might be able to... I, I do want two. One's not quite enough. But I think three is a bit more than I need. But I think two, one in each nacelle. And then if I want to at some later stage, I could replace this with another hydrogen tank. But we'll see how I feel about that. I, I mean, where am I at PCU-wise? 11,000 of 20,000. So I've still got a lot of room to go. And I don't really have too many more complex parts to put on here. Now I'm going to jump because that's going to start using up plenty of power. And that should start chewing through that fuel jump drives off. Alright, they're not on the toggle on off. Ooh. <laughs> uh, not all my jump drives are charged. While those are charging, I will be chewing through that fuel that I, I was worried I was going to waste. Which means I can get back to working on the design while these jump drives charge. And feel like I haven't wasted all that fuel I collected and turned into... all that ice I collected and turned into fuel. Quiet, birds. You're very noisy today. I think... For this part, I either need to get rid of this armor block or this ramp. And I'm leaning towards the armor block. I'm going to try and find a block that works better there. Because one of these needs to. <laughs> I can't find the right color to make the interior wall block with this texture work right. Maybe that side could work. But this is close. It's just not quite right. Could go this side of a pipe works. That. Ooh. Yeah. I had not realized that these shapes line up. Look, that gray area lines up perfectly with this. That's got to have been intentional. And I like it. Cool. Well, we're going to do that. That works. I think it looks quite neat. It means that the, the ramp doesn't just look like it ends in nothing. Yeah, it's not quite exactly what I wanted because the grey is more prominent at a distance than I was expecting, but it still continues-ish. I'll leave it for a while and see if it grows on me, as these things often do. Alright, so, back end of the nacelle. What do I want to do? I want to get rid of this welder first. I think what I'd like to try and do, because I feel like it will be a nice... Um, 
overall shape is either uh, let's get this out. Either cut the back end of the nacelle that way or that way. I'm gonna use this as a tool more often. This is actually <laughs> this is one of my better ways of showing uh, design ideas that I want to talk about. The reason for this is I kind of want to make the back feel less flat because at the moment, even with this hydrogen engine, uh, hydrogen engine, hydrogen thruster coming one block back further than the central part, I think we're still gonna end up with a very flat, straight looking edge, which unless specifically done, I think it makes it into a bit of a brick if I do that, at least from this perspective. So I'd like to avoid it. Right, weld this up and see how terrible it looks and how much I want to change it. I find that when I'm using these transition blocks, because they create two faces on the top, it's not quite working with what I was hoping. But in this case, maybe it will because I've got this extra flat surface that's the continuation of the flat side of the solar panel around the inside. It's all about giving as many of the shapes as possible a, I guess, a visual purpose. Oh, oh, at this distance, I quite like this. I've totally messed up my uh, trailing idea of stuff behind me, but I actually quite like this shape. I think that, yeah, I'm going to stick with that. But yeah, try and give as many of the pieces that you put on your ship a visual purpose. So one of the one of the most common visual purposes that I give stuff is support. So building stuff that looks like it provides structural integrity, even though the game requires none. At least that's that's my design approach. I know it's not for everybody, but that's that's kind of how I like to do things, and I've always found that it helps me. Uh, especially when I'm feeling stuck on what to do next with my design ideas. The more I can give something a purpose, the more kind of visual weight it carries and the better it feels. So I think I picked the wrong slopes just before. Let's try this again. Just like the rest of this nacelle, I think I'm going to go through about 20 or 30 iterations per part. Uh, it's just proving to be one of those build areas where... The shapes I'm trying to get together and the size I'm trying to do it in is just a little bit on the difficult end for me. And because they're so prominent on the side, I want to make sure I get them right. And I am not happy with this transition at all. I want this to be a smooth transition and then we'll deal with this edge bit after. So I'm going to have to mess with that. Because every time I look at it from the side, I'm like, Ugh. it just, it looks like I couldn't do what I wanted to do. And I don't like that it looks that way. Oh dear. Uh. Oh, close to the first on-screen death. I have definitely died in this, but have always died offline. I think I'm just going to go with the simple edge on here, and then I'll figure out the other sides. Other bits. So, just going to be this. Yeah. It's much cleaner. And it's, it's just what I want. It's what I need to have. It's, it's the only right option. Yeah, much happier with that. Just a little tiny little bit that pops out for the hydrogen thruster. I'm going to need to set up all my controls again because it looks like I've got a bunch of thrusters and things that aren't getting switched on and off with my timer blocks. But I saw that out in a little bit. It's not urgent. Now... There was something which I had wanted to do along the side here, or I'd thought about doing along the side here, uh, which I didn't have the space to make work prior to lengthening it. And the idea I had, and that's why this slope is here, was to try doing this. And have these diagonal pieces through this section. And see how that looked. But I needed to have more space because when I tried them before, and I think that got cut out of the episode, when I tried that before, it just, there wasn't enough there for it to work. <laughs> it just kind of felt weird. It wanted more, I think the surface wanted me to have more of the other stuff. Am I out of iron? No, one of my assemblers was turned off. There we go, all right, that was weird. I suspect it got weirded out because I think do I do have one of my assemblers on cooperative mode, so uh, that might have been something there. 
So yeah, let, I wanted to see whether this would work at a distance. Almost. It almost works. It doesn't quite work. I think I know what I need to change. So this one needs to go. We go full block there, and then that. And I hope that I've got the right number of blocks for what I'm thinking. And then we go slopey bit this way. So that's the little thruster hole. Annoyingly, this thruster kind of needs to possibly move, move to this cargo. So I might actually put one there, one there, and then put solid and solid and move the thruster. Oh yeah, that actually that could really work. Let's just weld this up and see how this thruster on the right looks before I do that. Hmm. Hmm. It's a bit different. I kind of like it. All right, let's do it. What the heck? Yeah. Huh. I both like it and don't like it. It's almost too prominent. Um, what could I do to make it so it's not... Uh, would it be better if instead of that I put these in? Ooh, possibly. Makes these holes just that little less deep. Like, the full block depth, I think, is just a bit much. It's close, though. I like it when I do something different. I'm like, yeah, I could, I could use the, I can see myself using this idea on something else as well. Now, I know some people are going to prefer the previous, and some people are going to prefer this. And what I really want is something like this block right here, except instead of this bit being a slope, it's a full... So there's basically just a triangle cut out. A triangle of... Basically the inverse of this block. The complete inverse. So if you just chopped this block out of a full cube, that block would be the perfect block for this setup. Because then we've only got a half block depth in the cutout. I think this is better. It's a bit weird with the angles, but... Oh... I think it might be better. Hmm. Time will distract me enough that I won't worry about it anymore. <laughs> it's about to say time will tell, but realistically. It's just going to distract me enough that I will be like, I'm sorry, what now? I did who now? I did dot? Nope. Oh, that's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay, cool. Back end of this is coming together. Let's get the inner side done. While I've been doing the little bit of building... I had to turn on my batteries, as in allow them to drain, because my engines couldn't provide enough power for the jump drives to charge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a jump, and I have to do the same again. Wait till the jump drives are charged. Once the jump drives are charged, turn the batteries back on to recharge, and then just run off the engines. And see how quickly I can get through the fuel up here. This is completely... This is almost completely pointless exercise. I could easily get more ice. But it's also one of those things I'm like, no, I want to do this. This is silly, pointless, but it's also, you know, mucking around and engineering a thing. Ish. All right, let's do this jump. 6,800 kilometers. Almost 6,900. And batteries. Let's turn you on auto. That'll allow the jump drives to charge. And the assembler to run at the same time. Because that was the problem. The assembler couldn't run at the same time as everything else. I'm not 100% sure that it, it can right now. Yeah, the batteries don't quite have enough to output to all the jump drives at once. So let's turn half of them off. Nope, let's turn six of them off. There we go. Just turn them on two at a time. I just need that assembler to keep running because I need to keep having parts made. Evil, evil eyes. <laughs> Peeking through a window. <laughs> uh, I like that. Uh, Alright, now, on the top side, I've got this little cutout to create a separation for the top to the main body. 
but I think for the main body, I actually want to run it flat. Or pretty flat to the surface. So, let's try it with the nacelle first because it's the smaller area and see how I feel about it once I'm done. Oh, I should put a solar panel on the underside as well, shouldn't I? Especially given, like, the fact that I came back to no power loss at all. I, I reached... I, I, I was at zero power losses. It, it stunned me. I'd, I'd been intentionally not going for perfect power situation before this, but having had it that once now, I'm like, oh, maybe I want it more often. Maybe this is what I actually should have been doing all along. Maybe I shouldn't have been so stubborn. Right, I'm going to weld this up and see how this feels. Because I've added a little bulbous bit that pokes out just on the outer edge of the thruster. And I'm curious whether it'll make the outside of the nacelle look weirdly bumpy. Or whether it'll do a nice job of covering the thruster a little bit. The other option, of course, is just to do these 2x1 bases all the way along and have the cutout for the uh, solar panel. Rather than the solar panel smoothly integrated into the surface. But with the way I've integrated the other ones, I kind of want to make the, them all that way. Yes. Yes, that's going to help a lot. So I've been using the plastic armor for the, I think the whole ship pretty much. But by using weldless on these half slope light armors, um, because they've got those rivets on every single block, they look very repetitive in most texture patterns. Like, the rivets in the plastic style, they've got a kind of a vent in the retro future, like, all these different designs, but having the weldless, it just, it, it stops being an attention-drawing, repetitive pattern and starts being something that just, just recedes into whatever else you've got there. So, like, comparing this pattern along here, which draws attention to the fact that that line's there, now I've hidden it. Which is why I really like the weldless. It's something that's great for very for some very particular uses like that. Now obviously I'm talking about my I've been talking about my power being, you know, not using up any while I was uh, on. While I've been offline, but that's not gonna be the case if I've got a bunch of cryopods running with a whole bunch of other people in them. But it's good to know at least with just me in there, it's fine. I don't know why I'd been going to the difficult access point when I had these connectors right here that was so much easier. I mean, I do know why. I completely forgot that the connectors were there. But, <laughs> it's annoying. <sighs> Am I okay with this? It's weird. I mean, that little bit of a dip there. I think it might be better if I just get rid of the extra bit of the front altogether. Or I could be entirely wrong, because that looks worse. <laughs> yeah, in the end, the simpler design is the winner here. I think I had enough stuff going on on all the other surfaces that to have too much going on on the bottom ended up taking away, I think, from all the other stuff that was going on. I just ended up starting to feel quite messy. So yeah, there we go. That'll be my completed nacelle design until I decide that I've... Well, that I'm not happy with it and I start modifying it. But I'm going to try to leave it alone at least until I've duplicated the design to the other side. I've managed to get this junk off the top. Uh, jump drive, let's put the next two on. And when I've started to... when I've got like my dropship design this back end bit is definitely going to need a lot of a re like a lot of reworking once I've finished everything else, but I'm going to try and ignore it <laughs> until I'm absolutely ready to deal with it. Okay, bottom of the main body and then mirroring and a whole lot of jumps. Ah, uh, poop. Does this need to be a conveyor junction? I kind of want to cover those up. I don't, I don't want that conveyor maze on there to be too visible. I'm going to see what I can do to hide it. I think the 
the way that will work that I'm happiest with is going to be this. Go to that. That. And then that's midline, isn't it? Ah, it doesn't quite go far enough. I'm going to need to bring this forward. Hold up. The alternative is push it back as far as I can, because I can probably push it back one block and then try and put some sort of plate or something over this and use that as a pattern to cover it up. May well be easier. I'll see if I can push this back far enough that I can get access to those blocks, but I just don't think I can. What are you connected to? Do you have to be a junction? Ooh, you could probably be a reinforced T piece. See, I don't mind that being on display so much. It was just having the full cargo conveyor, the full conveyor system doesn't really work for me. Oh, and that's on the medbay. I think that might be the only thing anchoring the medbay in position as well. Ooh, ooh, we've got a new medbay. That's right, let's... Ooh, I, I might be able to make that work instead. And then I can put a different connector on there. Let's check it out. I have not actually built a new med bay before. So I had entirely forgotten it existed. Um, where am I? Inset cryo room. Corner medical room. Okay, so that's conveyed on the corner side. Um, can I... Fix some conveyoring to do that. Probably can. Alright. I need to put down at least a survival kit somewhere else before I might uh, cut this off. Let's go bonk one out here. I do not like the idea of taking out my med bay and then dying and having to respawn and figuring out how on earth I'm going to get back to my stuff. I would definitely need to recruit someone to help me jump, <laughs> jump back here because I, I just can't see how I would ever... Oh, it'd just be horrible. I don't even have a GPS of where I am. Like, how would I find it? Ugh. Yeah, let's not take that risk. Okay, survival kit. Let's take out my med bay. And I don't know why I bothered closing the... Yeah, the airlocks when the... Inventory full. Air tightness was already busted. Alright, so take out that. I take these blocks out. And this one. Oh, awesome. Cool. So this is going to push my conveyoring back a block. Excellent. Oh, no. My oh. motors and other bits. Okay, so that's sitting underneath the door, which is perfect. Because that means I can again use my T-junction. But hide the bits that I want to hide. Like so. And use my regular reinforce this way. Won't mess with any air tightness. Then the reinforce curve, like so. And junction. So that moves all of my conveyoring back a block, which means I can then go back to my original plan of pushing this bottom bit forward a block so that I can cover it up. And these are much more subtle things to cover up anyway, so that's great. I can also, to make hiding those a little more subtle, I can put in some interior wall blocks as my flooring here. So that the edge of the armor isn't perfectly straight. I can kind of step it up. Which I think I will try out. I think maybe just something simple like putting three sci-fi interior walls across here. Okay, where's my tripod thing? There it is. Corner medical room. Oh, that fits this space so much better, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm happy with that. <laughs> that's a that's a nice improvement, I think. Now let's have a look on the outside and see how it's come together. Yeah, this should work a bit more nicely. Let's try it out. The block edge is a bit annoying. Uh, but I think... I think once I put the rest of the armor on, it won't stand out too much. And I can probably make it stand out even less by adding some extra 
edges in this bottom section. So if I put, say, light armor panels running along there and along there, I'm gonna hide those edges that are there by adding more edges. Okay. So I've got this big space under the ship. And I've basically, if I follow the design ethos that I've used for the other things, I've got to just cover it in armor. And that's going to create a big flat space. Now, big flat space begs for solar panels, which, as I've been finding, are, you know, not so bad to have in space. Quite useful and will actually give me, you know, a decent amount of power and enough to get by, at least for me. But... Are they going to be too boring if I just have solar panels here? So what I'd be thinking is, because of the way everything else is working, this would go off full lockdown. Because as you can see, right now it's the exact same height as... Well, it's the exact same depth as the nacelle. I'd want to bring it a full lockdown so there's a clear differentiation between the two. I wouldn't want to go a half. Because then they'll kind of blend into each other. So if I was going to do that... Flip that around and go there. Will the two stripes from the solar panels be interesting enough to break this up? Or am I going to have to add some varied depth as well? I'm not sure. But what I think I'll do if I need some depth is initially just go half block for that central line here. Because I've done a similar cutout on the top. But because I've done a similar cutout on the top, I kind of don't want to have to do that. Because it'll feel too samey, I think, for that. I'm going to try it at full block and then see how it goes. I've also got all this extra space and conveyors up this end. So I could, if I wanted to, potentially get some hydrogen thrusters in up the front. But I don't know if I actually want to do that. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know that that's what I really want. I can't think of a good reason... For me to have more thrusters. Like, the more I look at them, the more I'm like, alright, I don't see the benefit here. Ooh, how are we going here? Just get distracted briefly. We're down to less than 20% fuel in this tank. All of it converted into energy. Not in the most efficient way, I will completely admit. By turning on the batteries, my engines charge the batteries, and then the batteries charge the jump drives. And I lose a bit of power charging the batteries. If I was just going engine straight into the jump drives, that would be perfectly efficient. But because of the battery midway, I'm losing a little bit. But I was going to destroy this gas anyway, so I figured the efficiency doesn't matter. That's just on the side. Do I have any reason to put hydrogen thrust in? I don't think I do. But if I come up with one later, I will hopefully remember that I've got access in those points. <laughs> so that I can do something with it. All right, let's get this armor placed down and welded. Feels a little like cheating using solar panels to break up a flat area. Because <laughs> it's like, yeah, they're giant solar panels. Of course it's going to be flat. There's just that visual... There's that, there's that inherent expectation of large solar farm equals flat. And so there's no... There's less disappointment in seeing that and uh, it not being an Energy interesting shape critical. or something different does feel very flat though even when it's in scaffolding so to my mind having flat surfaces like j having to my mind just having flat surfaces is not necessarily a bad thing it just depends on the scale of the rest of your build as to how big you can let that flat surface be like I've seen a lot of people talk about a rule of threes which is a three by three area should probably not be left flat but I don't think that's true. It, as I said, it really depends on the full size scale of your build and how large the greebles are, so the little bits that break up the surface are on your whole build. If you're building something at a gargantuan scale, you don't want every three by three to have some varied texture to it. Because if you do that, you end up with something that's very messy looking unless it's so big that those greebles disappear at the full scale. So that's the kind of Star Wars way of doing things, where you end up getting so big that it does disappear. Or the old Star Wars. I haven't watched the new ones. Um, <laughs> well, I watched half of one of them. Anyway. <laughs> 
since we've now got access to the worldless armor, we can do some interesting things at much bigger scales than we used to be able to because they're no longer broken up at every scale in between. And I think when we when you're talking about the original Space Engineers armor textures, they really did work at that. You should probably break it down at a 3 by 3 scale. But we've got more options now, so I think we can go with... I think that's a rule that has less applicability now than it did a couple of years ago. And when I say a rule, anytime you're talking aesthetics, nothing is a rule in, like, you must follow this. If you don't follow this, you are wrong. It's more of a, this is a helpful tip for people who are starting out and who are struggling to get something that they feel looks nice. If you start with this idea, you'll start putting things together in a way that you might be more pleased with, and then experiment more and gradually build up a repertoire of things built in a particular way that you're like, yeah, I like this. This suits me. I'm happy with this. Philosophy with splitsy. <laughs> Aesthetic philosophy, at least. Also, this surface here is a perfect example of where aesthetics and efficiency do not meet. Because <laughs> the efficient thing to do is to stick more of those solar panels on there. But the better aesthetic thing to do is go, no, I don't need all those things. I'm not going to do it all. I'm going to do this with just kind of something. I'll do something, but it may not do enough on its own. But it'll look good, so... It's a little funny with the angles that I've put on here. But maybe if I change these ones, it'll work a little bit better. So what I had done was I was cutting in up here, but I was coming out at the full here, and it, there was no real... Um, it just, I don't know, didn't, it didn't feel right. So if I do this instead, will this feel better? It's the same... Because the angles are at the same... Because the because the angles are the same at the start of the solar panel to the end of it, rather than being different at each end. And I think the different at each end wasn't quite working out. I'm actually not sure if that's better or worse. I get the theory of what I was trying to do, but I don't know that it actually worked. Oh well. We'll leave it for now. Put the more complete side of the ship sunward. Well, actually... The more complete... The almost complete. I just need a little bit on the top here. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, cool. All right. Well, that's going to make... <laughs> that's going to make the rest of this into a... I need to weld up everything on this side. Oh. Um, yeah. The hunt for cobalt begins anew. I'm out. <laughs> I can't finish off this... This ion thruster. Because I don't have enough cobalt to build the thruster components. Huh. Okay. Um... Do I want to do this? So I'll just start flying around. Same way I did before. Because I do want to find that. I should probably try and Should've find that before low. I... And I can just, while I'm searching, slowly build up the right-hand side of the ship. And we'll also slowly burn the fuel so then I can get rid of those fuel tanks. And once I've gotten rid of the fuel tanks, I'll get rid of the cargo containers and the assembler up there. And then this thing will start to feel like it's taking shape. And I've just got to jump those 160,000 Ks and build a dropship. Which I think I've said about four times and still haven't built the dropship. Blue. Aha, that might be cobalt. Ship fuel low. The only thing I need to remember is, once I've got the shaping done, I still need to pick a colour palette. Because I don't really want this to be all white. I would like it to have a colour palette. And... I'm... Probably, because I've had it white for so long, I uh, will probably do something like, um... Just add some splashes of colour rather than having it colour with splashes of grey and white and black and stuff. But I definitely want to add some colour to it somewhere. But I, don't, I genuinely don't know what colour. Don't even have a feel for it yet. I really hope that's not magnesium. 
It feels like it could be. Oh, of course. I, I don't know why I'd forgotten about this, but I really should, when I'm in, like, a turret looking around for stuff, I really should use the whole alt and then I can steer the ship thing so that I don't lose track of the asteroid that I'm following. No. Although, now I have steered myself directly to it, so let's go slightly off to the side so I don't go careening into it if I get distracted. Alright, let's see. Oh, uh, I might want to fly this from the other cockpit, actually. As I get closer. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> I was looking at my... <laughs> Hang on, I gotta show you what. I gotta, I gotta show this properly. Okay, <laughs> so. Ship fuel low. Notice my hotbar. I can't see my ore detector anymore. Notice my ore detector. Currently a smoking little thing attached to my ship. Seems I cooked it with my thruster. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I might need to move it back a little bit. Ah! No, I don't want those. I just want the detector components. I mean, at this point, I can probably get rid of the thing. The disco detector doesn't have a big role. And it is indeed cobalt. I was not deceived by magnesium. Ship fuel low. He's going to be saying that a lot. Strong unknown signal, 101,000 kilometers away. I don't think I'm going to get to that. That is also not anywhere Ship fuel critical. on my little route. Huh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well, that ain't right. Ship fuel critical. Huh. So this, um... Yeah, that ain't right at all. I'm gonna jump in my cryopod. I'm gonna exit and rejoin the game. <laughs> uh, 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 um, hmm. Yeah, that, that fills me with concern. Ship fuel critical. What? Uh, what's that? Uh, maybe I'm okay. I think it's something weird with the geometry of the asteroid. Ship fuel critical. Probably have enough cobalt already. How much cobalt do I have? Cobalt. Cobalt. Two thousand twenty. All right, that's done. That's sorted. I'll now get those parts. Oh yeah, my battery's fully depleted in two minutes. How close are the jump drives to being done? Four minutes. And how are those tanks doing? Can I can I go back to reactor power? Do I start searching for some more uranium? We're down to 0.9% in this tank. That's going to be run out very shortly. And this one is down to... Effectively zero. Okay. Okay, hydrogen engines are being used. Their fuel is down to 70%. That means these two tanks are empty, so... Bye. Let's get rid of these things. It's gonna feel weird without these on top. <laughs> it's Inventory. it's probably been kind of subconsciously impacting my perception of the um, like the profile of the ship more than I was intending it to, because I was trying to ignore it whenever I looked at the shape, but you know, it's physically there, so it's impossible to completely ignore. Now, cargo containers. Do I get rid of all of you yet? Kind of want to keep the assembler for now. It's nice having two. But I can lose this one. It's empty anyway. Yeah, how does that feel? It feels quite different. Even with still the assembler and that large cargo up there. But I'm happy. I'm happy to have removed most of that. So yeah, I've, I've now just got a copy this armor across and then then it really is time to start building the the drop ships the drop ships i'm starting to kind of get a clearer idea in my head of what i want them to be i need them to be a walkable small grid probably or i'll make them a small large grid potentially more likely to be the small large grid for PCU reasons, because then I can get away with fewer thrusters for more thrust. 
and with the the cryopods that we can actually see through in large grid now there's less push for me to go small grid because that was the main reason i wanted to be able to see all the people in them like i, I want to be able to see that there's a person in each cryopod and i don't really mind that there's a wall between them it would have been nice if they'd been the small grid ones like in my original thumbnail so i may do that i may not i'm gonna try actually having just thought that through as i was saying all that I will try to go with a small grid design first, if I can make one that's relatively PCU efficient. Because I would like to have that where you can see multiple people in multiple cryopods in the same view. Because I think that adds something to it. But I want it to be walkable, so it needs to be something that I can walk... Bleh, I can walk from this area out here into the back of the collector and see the rows of cryopods. I was also thinking that it may be worthwhile having something on those ships that I could use as a means to go and do a quick collection of some sort of material each time I go down to one of the planets. Mainly that material would probably be uranium, so that I've got power, uh, but potentially also something for ice. But I think... It might be better just to have two completely separate things. So build an atmospheric capable mining vehicle and the atmospheric capable and gravity capable collector dropships. Yeah, I've just now got to build a whole lot of armor. A whole lot of armor. Oh, and of course extend this nacelle out. It's, it's shorter than the other side. <laughs> I'll start on I'm gonna start on the middle of the ship, but yeah. I'm probably going to cut out about 90% of what I do for the next hour or two as I <laughs> duplicate this armor. I'm going to sit here by this asteroid though because I'm probably going to need some more iron at some point. So it makes sense for me to just stay here, I think. Okay. Well, <laughs> this is now a thing. I have mirrored the whole lot. It is... Oh, wait, no. It's almost symmetrical. There's one bit that I left out because it was going to make my life easier as I went along. I didn't put these two windows in. Because uh, there was a time where I was using this as my cargo access. Remove the bits at the top. Ah, uh, it's... Wait, wrong way around. It can be so long till I got to the point where I could do this. And I am so happy to finally be here. Because... Oh, connection problem. Come on. Come on. Let me weld up. I'm so close. Don't do this to me now. Let me get that done. Don't be like this. Yes. Okay, now we're completely symmetrical. I've chopped the stuff off the top so we've got only a single assembler now uh the cargoes are gone the gas the hydrogen tanks are gone it almost looks short now <laughs> i could put uh, to put a little the the only word that comes to mind is strike but it's more like a upside down keel uh something up the top here i might toy around with that i'll get these solar panels built first. Yeah, I'm, this is, <laughs> this is making me happy. I'm really happy with the shape of this ship. I still haven't decided on a colour. I may leave the colour for next week to see how I'm feeling about it and try and maybe, maybe play around with a few. What to do with this middle section though? Not quite sure. Might uh, continue that there then see how it looks with that and then I've got full blocks underneath which will allow me to attach some lights the other way and I think oh I don't know if the corner of these solar panels is airtight but if not I can put plate up there because I was thinking that this interior space here would probably be best made airtight probably maybe not sure I kind of like the idea of it being airtight uh, so let's put a door in Oh, I'll have to actually make an airlock, won't I? Um, hmm. That's a pity. 
an air airlock's gonna get rid of all this space back here. Maybe I'll just leave it open. Open or just a single door. Door there? Yeah, door there could kinda work, I think. Not gonna pressurize this space, but I figured having a door on here makes it feel a bit more complete. Also, having some lighting in here might make it feel more complete as well. Yeah. We have lights. We have security door. And we have a ship. A ship that I've... I, I can't believe it. I wasn't expecting to get to a point where I felt like it was complete. Oh, wait a second. I am lacking... Lacking something that it probably will need to have later, but doesn't need right now. And that's a way to broadcast its location, because at some point, I need to be able to show off the collection, which means I need to be able to broadcast to everyone where the collection is. I am going to need to make sure when I get back to the planets that I can get hold of some zone chips, which means I'm going to have to figure out how I can find a trading station, find the materials that it wants, so I can trade with it and buy those zone chips. Because, as I said, I want to broadcast. And if I'm going to broadcast, definitely going to need a safe zone. So that, you know, once the museum's set up and running, it can exist for at least a reasonable period of time. But yeah, I am now... Oh, one jump away from being past the halfway mark. Oh, so close. 120,000 Ks have travelled, 126,000 to go. But the last 126,000 will probably go past a lot quicker than the first 120. Because yeah, en route to home, I have kind of one big job I want to do before I get in range of the planets, which is design a dropship. My idea at the moment is to have a dropship that merge blocks onto a cryopod module because obviously I don't want the whole cryo module to have all the thrusters the batteries all that sort of stuff that's going to make them barely PCU heavy because I do I do still have more than half my PCU available but it will start to become a problem if I can manage to collect enough engineers but you know then we might bring Steve in to take some of the load <laughs> yeah I'm going to start designing that next time and hopefully get a paint job onto the ship that's still called the Porpoise. I still don't have a name for it. But yeah, there's all that and plenty more to come. And I will see you then. I'm so happy. I really wish I would have waited for the jump drives to be charged. <laughs> so I could have been more than halfway when I ended. Oh well, close enough. <laughs>